Welcome to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the printed parts for the VZBot 330 Mellifly kit. And by the way, if you haven't seen my unboxing video yet, go ahead and check that out. I'll leave the video in the description. This is the first part of my build series, and I'm going to be going through step, pretty much step by step on how to build a Mellifly VZ330. A very important part of that is getting your parts printed. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what you need to know. Hopefully this will help you as you start preparing for your build. I'm just going to walk through some of the parts and kind of the high level process. You will find instructions in the VZBot manual on what to print, but basically you're going to want several walls around five to six, and you're also going to want 40 to 50% infill. And in my case, I'm using two different ASA filaments. The first one here, my accent color is this red. My base color is black, and that's kind of the traditional VZBot colors. Both of these filaments are ASA and they are Polymaker Polylite. It is going to be really important to print these parts in a heated chamber. You do want to use ASA or probably ABS at a minimum. You are going to most likely be printing in a heated chamber. So when you put those panels on, things are going to get very warm and you don't want your parts to hit the glass transition temperature. I've been making good use of my Voron printers. This is the 2.4, it's currently printing an exhaust part. And my Trident has been keeping busy as well, printing the accent colors, you can see the reds loaded. In order to print ASA, you really do need a heated chamber. You can see here that I'm printing at 260 and 100 for the bed temperature. You also wanna make sure you have a really good seal, otherwise you might get curling. You can see by looking at this printer, this printed part, I've got these little helper discs in the corner. And those little helper discs help keep those corners down. Um, it's just an insurance policy. Generally, I don't have problems, but I like to do that. Before printing these parts, you want to make sure that you have input shaper tuned. Otherwise, you might get ghosting. You can see that I've got it pretty well tuned here. You also want to make sure that your top layer perimeters are good and you're not over extruding. I recommend using the Ellis Guide for tuning and calibrating your printer, especially if you're running Clipper. And there's the print quality that you can see. This is with the Trident. I think it's pretty good quality. There's always room for improvement, but... This is a good extrusion, in my opinion. Now, a lot of these parts are good without supports, but you are going to run into a few that do require them. And you should be able to tell if you're gonna need supports just by looking at the part. Unfortunately, the build guy doesn't really offer that information. I would just go ahead and leave supports on for everything and then remove it if it clearly doesn't need it. Like some of these, these fan parts for the RSCS, these said that it needed supports, but really you can get away without them. Other parts like this one, because of the way the, the ducts are, you're definitely going to need to have supports turned on. So far I printed about two rolls, one roll of the red, uh, maybe not quite a full roll of the red, but which, is, which I'm using for the accent part. And I've also printed almost a full roll of the black. I've only had a few parts that were, that maybe warped or, or I had issues with. So I think that's a pretty accurate assessment. Now, I think you're personally going to need probably two rolls of your primary color or black in my case. Um, I have not gotten through the exhaust parts yet, but looking at the slicing, uh, there's like maybe a, almost a day long print for the uh, exhaust filter that goes on the back. I've still got all the enclosure parts that I have not started yet. It, it's a good idea to plan on two rolls for your primary color and maybe one roll for your accent color. And that, that's definitely gonna be enough to get you through the majority of the parts for the build. If you're not using the CNC parts, then you're probably going to need more. And something I also really like to use when I'm printing is this nano polymer adhesive. This stuff is really good and it does not leave a residue on your parts. It's basically an insurance policy. It'll help make sure that your parts stay down and stick to the bed. And you can get this in the US on Amazon and it may be available elsewhere as well. And a little bit goes a long way. And you may notice there are some parts like this, which is not one of the standard parts. This is actually going to be used for a Wago mount mod on the bed. There are gonna be a few minor mods that I plan on doing. And I'll talk about those as I go through the build. If you don't happen to have a 3D printer, there's still hope for you. Uh, there is a new program announced by vez 3d recently called easy vz and that basically allows you to request your parts to be printed and you can do that request through the discord um, i'll go ahead and link that in the description if you want to learn more about that but from what it sounds like it's a lot like the voron print it forward or pif program so if you're familiar with that you might know a little bit about how that works um, there's also options to get printed parts from different vendors and 
just look around. I know Provoke 3D in the past has printed parts for Voron, and I think he may be uh, looking at printing parts for VZBots as well. So there are different vendors like that, that that may also provide the parts. If you don't have an enclosed printer, and maybe you've got an Ender 3 or a Prusa Mini or something like that, it is still possible to print ASA and ABS materials. It is a little bit more challenging, but you can create your own enclosure. You could get something as cheap as a cardboard box and place the cardboard box over the printer. I've seen people do that and have some success. Another popular option is looking into something like an IKEA LAC enclosure, which is kind of a DIY um, enclosure where you put your own panels on and assemble it. You're also going to want to have a very flat surface. Unfortunately, a lot of these tabletops, like this plastic table I have here, they're just not very flat. Um, there's bumps and things in it. So what I've done, normally I use a outdoor patio table, but since it's summertime right now, I can't use it because it's uh, being used. So what I've done uh, is I've purchased two of these 12 by 24 or so floor tiles, and I've butted them together and taped them. That's going to get me flat enough, I think. It's very important to have a flat surface because if you don't, you're not gonna get your end joint square. In order to do a build like this, you're also going to need a number of tools, and that's going to include a, some good quality drivers, both ball joint and straight, and you're also going to need crimpers, because there are pins that are in wiring that's gonna to need to be crimped in this build. I will go ahead and post a link to another video that I've done in the past, so you can see what I use and even get links directly to them in the description. Well, I hope you're as excited as I am about this build. Please stay tuned and I will get these out as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching.